Welcome to my channel, my name is Goar and I'm recording my first video ever on this channel that will be devoted to uh, language learning, to sharing like experience about different cultures and getting to know, I, I hope you guys also a bit better. And my first question is, have you ever thought of you know, um, learning a new language and you kind of felt like, oh, this is not for me or maybe I'm, you know, I'm too busy, I'm too old <laughs> or maybe too young even or like you found some kind of excuse probably and I bet you have because like lots of people around the world in different countries, well, they study English of course or they have to study and they don't feel really excited about learning the language. So whether it was your school, university, maybe for your um, job even you had to learn you had and you felt like, oh, I can't do this, this is too hard. Well, today I want to talk to you about uh, some doubts you might have had and let's say some myths that people might have about learning a language that prevent them from actually getting to it or even if they've been learning for a while that prevent them from you know, uh, breaking through that like barrier or um, moving up to a new level and fe feeling more confident, feeling more fluent in that language. So briefly about myself, I'm, my name is Goar, like I said, and I come from Armenia. I was born there, but as a child, my parents moved to Russia. So I've been living like I have lived in Russia all of my life. Now I'm back to Armenia and I, I speak both languages fluently. I really love them. They're really beautiful, like sounding, pronunciation, and the, the everything you can express in those languages. And I feel like a language should be really a means of communication in a way that you don't have to do it, but you feel like you really fall in love with it as you go, even if it starts maybe uh, as an obligation for some of you. So I just want to make sure that you guys um, really feel free and you feel like you're interested in that. So I'm going to start yeah, with my own experience on this channel. I will share how I learned uh, myself English, which was my, um, well, kind of first foreign language. After that, I, I took some French and German and I could like come to kind of intermediate level in both. But uh, later on, I fell in love with Spanish. So I'm going to start my channel with some Spanish, uh, be beginner Spanish uh, tips and um, ideas how to learn better grammar, vocabulary and even spoken phrases that you might not find in books <laughs> because I do have an experience of studying, living abroad. I was lucky enough to study abroad in the US as a uh, university student and later on I did one year volunteer project in Spain. But I, well, I will speak about that in the upcoming videos. I hope I will shoot them every week. And I really want to hear your feedback, what you would like to see more of and hear more of. And yeah, without further ado, let's, let's get right into it. Let's dive right into it. So today I will speak about five myths or about so that prevent people from learning a language or starting learning or continuing learning. Because everyone, every culture, I think, every country, doesn't matter where you come from, they might have these ideas. So I got my notes here and I'm going to look up to the first one, which is that you can learn only when you are young. Now tell me, a lot of people believe this, right? I don't know where they actually find that from, where they, where they get this from, that you, you can only learn as a child. Of course, uh, it's much easier if you start earlier, but it does not mean, does not imply that you only have to like learn English or any other language you want to learn when you're five years old and when you're say 55, you cannot start learning it. And I think there is, a, well, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of research that proves uh, actually your brain and our, our brain, like um, how to say that, the neurons in our brains, they kind of develop uh, further as as we get older well it kind of gets harder but learning a language can actually uh, prevent our brain from getting older isn't that amazing like you can actually uh, prolong your use let's say so because i believe you can stay young uh, all all of your life you don't have to get old if you don't want to get older so yeah learning a language can really help um, our minds and our like feeling about ourselves and broadening our mind in that ways okay point number two 
that you only practice with native speakers uh, of the language or you have to live in that country to get fluent in the language. Now tell me, how many of you have thought that, okay, I will never speak a language if I don't travel there, if I don't meet people from this country and I cannot practice with anyone in my town. Okay, I come from kind of rural, no, not rural, but <laughs> well, I can come from, let's say, a provincial town which does not have really a lot of uh, foreign speakers and yeah after I came back from Spain I remember feeling even from US yeah I remember feeling really um, not confident to talk because like there were no native no native speakers not even foreigners in my town <laughs> at first but then later I met them at the university of course it's a huge plus but you know a lot of people and you might know them also, they go abroad, maybe they live for a short time, maybe for a long time, but they only communicate in their native language, which means that like they go shopping or um, they just meet with friends, hang out with friends, which are from their countries or speak the same language as they do. And you know, in that case, they will never even speak a word of a language. Like I know people who moved from Russia to US now even from Armenia to US and they only live in this kind of community of the immigrants from the same country or speaking the same language and they don't get to speak the, the word of a language uh, of the country they live in and you might guess why that is because it's important to surround yourself with the language and right now actually with YouTube, with Netflix, with books and magazines if someone still reads them, I guess someone does online maybe blogs um like you know there's so much information around you and you can surround yourself with that in the language you're learning in your target language so if it's english yeah go for you know books movies um music yeah that's what i did when i was starting myself learning like any language basically because i just liked how it sounded at first and then i wanted to understand more of it so when you can surround yourself with that you can actually practice more and more uh, yeah, so also as for the question of getting a native tutor or non-native tutor, I would say non-natives are better when you're a beginner because they could explain in your native language that, that, that would kind of take the pressure away. But yeah, as you, as you become more confident and fluent in the language, of course, it's wonderful to have an opportunity to talk to native speakers as well. Okay, point number three you need a lot of time to learn a language of course everyone is really busy nowadays we have our jobs our personal life our well studies travel hobbies sports like a lot of other things we want to learn and we want to do in our lives but we do have a tight schedule and anyways i don't think this is a, really an excuse because uh well studies have showed that you can check that well, you can find information on that if you'd like, that if you say you're preparing for an exam, uh, okay, Spanish exam, let's take that, or English exam for, well, a test maybe of midterm or finals, and you have only like the last night, the better, tell me how many people have done that, come on, you, you should, well, I, I guess you have, put that in the comments if you have. I guess you just live it on the last uh, couple days, even the last night before the exam. So you only have like really limited time to um, study vocabulary or grammar or something. So you sort of binge study <laughs> the night before. But tell me like a week later or two months later, six months later, do you even remember anything of that? It doesn't have to be English, really. It just how I remember it works. That's what I want to show you here. But if you put only, you know, 15, 20, uh, 20 minutes, half an hour maybe, well, an hour is kind of a lot of time for a lot of people to find on a regular basis. But if it's 15 to 20 minutes, there's, I think, a Japanese kind of uh, method, yeah, for doing that. If you do something step by step for a little time, it's better because your brain really works that way that the short-term memory becomes long-term memory and then you can feel like, yeah, six months later, even two months, six months, yeah, as the time goes by, you will remember this vocabulary, you will remember what you learn and it's not only about language learning, it's about anything, pretty much anything you learn, subjects or new information. 
So that was point three, moving on to number four, there is no chance to practice. Yeah, I, I talked about that a bit earlier, but I feel you totally here. You might feel like there is no one next to me to talk. <laughs> There's no chance to practice actually. Um, again, uh, the internet is the best resource you can have. You can ha download a lot of apps. Most of them are free they, or they do have a free option kind of plan. Maybe speaking could be hard, but you know, other skills like reading something, listening, um, even, even writing, you can practice. For example, you find a topic, this is really important, really hear me on this one, I guess. And this is, I, this is gonna be in the tips also. Uh, you should find something that really motivates you to study, but also that should be something that you are really into. For example, you like traveling or you like you know, fashion or cooking. Um, and what you do is I suggest, yeah, go find a blog or a Facebook group or like any sort of social media you use, Instagram, whatever it is. So you find a group or you find like um, a blogger, a person, influencer that you follow and in the language, of course, that you're studying. And then you can have a discussion, like you can put your question in the comments. I'm sure someone, even that person could reply to you. And then you have kind of discussion there and you might want to like check a lot of abbreviations and stuff like that, but that is amazing. And don't tell me you don't have a chance to practice the language you're learning when you have internet, when you have, yeah, all these apps, books and other sources you can try. Uh, okay, if you don't wanna, yeah, go to like private messaging someone, finding a study buddy, Discussions is an amazing source, I would say. Now we're coming to the last kind of myth, <laughs> let's say so. The more I learn, the more confused I get. So have you ever felt like that? Not on the learning a language, anything, studying, I don't know, music maybe, or um, history for your exam, anything you want to learn and you become like really confused. It should be getting easier as you learn, but like, okay, you passed the first week, you're really excited, the um, first month maybe, and then one year later you feel like, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do, I don't understand all these participles, conditionals, like all that other stuff. Like you're studying Russian and it becomes so hard after you pass, like, okay, you study, vocab um, you study alphabet, and then you feel like, what do I do next, right? So I would say, uh, yeah, there are too many rules. There are a lot of exceptions from rules. There, there could be some pressure to speak, way too much to learn. I would say just wait, take a deep breath. And what you have to do is remember that even if you're native, uh, a native speaker of um, English language, do you use like all of that Oxford dictionary? I don't know how many words there are, but I'm pretty sure a lot, <laughs> let's say so. I should check that up. Okay, let's let's comment on that. How many words are there in the Oxford English language dictionary, right? So I, I'm just like my point here is that you don't need um, to know all of the grammar, all of vocabulary. You don't have to like do all the exercises and drills and other sources. Like it's good, of course, can help you improve. But to start the language when you're a complete beginner. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do Spanish for beginners, Russian for beginners, and English. Well, I will say maybe beginners, maybe intermediate also when you want to improve or when you want to like, get to know a lot of uh, spoken English and other <laughs> other tricks. <laughs> Let's say so phrasal verbs. So my favorite topic, really. So you just need the basics to start off. And then as you, uh, for example, you go shopping and, okay, you can do that online. You don't even need to speak a language there, but sometimes you do. Uh, so you don't need to know like all sorts of fruits and vegetables that there are. You just need the ones that you buy most often. And that could be how many, five, six items perhaps, or you don't need to know all kind of furniture, cutlery, I don't know, plants. I don't even know all kind of plants in my native language, to be honest with you, plants, birds, like this is a topic that is really hard. What I want to say is that you don't need to know all of everything. Everything is impossible to know because language learning is a process and it's kind of like a ride and you should enjoy the ride as you're on it. So I would say just start with the basics and you will feel like you're uh, yeah, brushing up and you're expanding and you feel that you have to use that. That's the question. And I will talk about that in my further videos about tips, how to learn, not only, you know, memorize lists and okay, I forget this. I don't know how to use that. 
but versus you know um, being able to make sentences to understand how native people uh, build their sentence and how they communicate and how to make that communication <laughs> communication sorry efficiently <laughs> so yeah just step by step it's gonna be um well i wouldn't say it's easy it's like nothing is easy in the beginning but then as you as you're moving on and you feel more confident and you understand like wow i went shopping i bought something and i understood what they told me even the numbers which can be really hard the price of something you buy or like i traveled and i could sign into the uh, check into the hotel and understand completely what they told me what they asked me or somebody told me the directions in the street like how many people <laughs> do actually understand the directions they are given in their native language because sometimes i get really confused with all this right left straight and uh, so on so yeah you feel confident you feel better and i feel really amazed and i feel really inspired when my students told tell me that um they have passed an interview or um you know they got accepted to uh, some study abroad program or even like moving abroad to live and they they really feel um, like they can make their dreams come true because they put so much effort to study the language to learn it and Christy enjoy it so that's what I want to do here for you and this is my biggest passion I think traveling learning communicating sharing my experience so I'd be really happy to see you guys again let me know what you think about this myth if you ever came across them if you ever maybe you have that now maybe you just thought like uh-huh this is what i should work on that this is what i should kind of overcome sort of yeah so thank you so much for watching this please follow me if you haven't yet <laughs> and i'd be happy to see you soon i will try to make this regular because i'm really enjoying um, all this process Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Best of luck. Bye-bye. See ya.